we've got right now. Uh, but we're always looking to grow our player pool. Uh, what we have now with the competition, with us being ranked number 12th in the world, uh, we have to break into the top eight in the world to get to the Paralympics, so we're, we're only a step away. We now need athletes who are willing to dedicate themselves 365 days a year, training five days a week, six days a week, that want to play for Canada, and then they work that hard. And I think in years past, we've had athletes who are great guys, uh, but the dedication of actually committing themselves to the program and committing themselves to work four or five days a week to get where they got to be. Uh, we have great pool athletes now, and most of them are doing that. And uh, you know, we're looking for another two, three, four, five players like that that'll push our athletes even further. Yuri is uh, diplegic, and by diplegic we mean that his hips are turned in and his knees are pointed in and the toes pointed in like a pigeon-toed runner. Uh, when you observe him on the field, you'll notice that he runs very well forward and uh, struggles moving backwards. He would struggle moving laterally, left to right, if the ball goes to his left side or right side. He has the inability to turn his legs or his feet outwards to trap a ball like a normal athlete and tends to trap the ball with the outside of his feet. With the, with the three CP5 athletes that we have in the video, Yuri, Jesse, and Jeremy, uh, Jesse uh, displays the most CP in both his hands and his feet. He notice, notice when he's running forward and backwards that he really has to concentrate and struggles going back and forth from side to side. Whereas when you watch Jeremy running back and forth, although his toes are pigeon-toed, he has quite a fluid stride and doesn't struggle as much going forward and backwards. A CP6 athlete, uh, instead of showing diplegia, uh, suffers from ataxia or is athetoid, which really is involuntary control of the muscles. You may see hands moving a little bit to the side, uh, you may see muscle twitches in the, in the face or in uncontrolled movements of the head. Uh, inability to stop is probably the main characteristics that you find in a CP6 athlete. A CP7 athlete is hemiplegic, which means they are affected from CP on one side of the body. Uh, it can be both in the arm and the foot and leg, or perhaps it may only appear in the arm. You'll notice when they're actually playing the sport that they tend to carry the affected limb uh, close to their body, almost like a wing tucked in. Liam has a very mild hemiplegia. You, you notice when he's running the way he carries his arm that he, has, he is affected on his one side. He tends to play the ball with his unaffected side on a regular basis. Uh, he does have the ability to stop the ball with his affected foot. However, he tends to naturally always play to his strong side. Jimmy, uh, you notice it more in both his hand and his foot than you do in Liam. Uh, notice Jimmy as he runs backward in the video, he actually has to turn his body to make sure that he does not fall over, moving with his good foot going backwards and then bringing his affected foot as he runs. Liam, on the other hand, when you notice he runs, he does not have to turn sideways in order to move backwards. Uh, Jimmy hops a little bit when he runs off of his affected side. A CP8 athlete is someone who has mild cerebral palsy or has an acquired brain injury or recovering from stroke. To the coaches out there, it would be very hard to notice the, a CP8 while he plays on the field. Usually he has very mild discrepancies in leg strength or may have problems with balance. When a CP8 plays the game, as he plays later on and gets tires down, you see his body start to break down and you may see a loss of balance or you may see the inability to play the ball with the affected side from the injury. 